Wake Kids. And I'm Mr. Mark. And we're part of Lake Grove Kids, which is... At Lake Grove Presbyterian Church. <laughs> and we're so glad, always, that you are with us. We are indeed. Let me show you what you're going to want to have today. You're going to want to have some Play-Doh with you while you're listening. We have ours ready. Let me also show you how the bulbs are growing. Remember last week? We planted the bulbs in honor of celebrating ordinary time. But before we could get them planted, someone stole a bulb, a bulb off the stool and bit off the top. Right. Ate it. And we're celebrating. We planted those bulbs because it's ordinary time. That time between the end of Epiphany and the beginning of Lent. The time in our church calendar... That celebrates new life. So let me show you that even though our friend over here ate the bulb, there is new life. Can you see it right there? We remembered that the color for ordinary time is green. Things are growing. They're renewing. Just like our lives in Jesus. But before we go any further, we mm -hmm. want you to meet the culprit. Mm -hmm. We're going to show you just who did this. Uh -huh. Can you jump up? Come on, jump up. You can do it. Good job. Hey, Joe. Say hi to all our friends. Everybody, we'd like you to meet Joe, who we also call the bun. He was the culprit that ate last week's Narcissus bulb. So he's having a special treat today that's not a Narcissus bulb. And also some lettuce. Let's worship together. I'm going to live so God can use me anywhere, Lord. So God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to learn so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to learn so God can use me anywhere, Lord, anytime. I'm going to pray so God can use me. to worship that we did last week. Let me help us remember what the signs are we used as we talked about living for Jesus, by Jesus, with Jesus, through Jesus, and in Jesus. Let's say it together. We, we live, live for, for Jesus. Jesus. We, we live for by Jesus, we, we live with Jesus, we live through Jesus, and we live in Jesus. God of grace, let Jesus be praised in all we say and do, in all we think, in all we speak. 
in this time of worship and in every moment of our every day. Have you heard of his perfect love? Have you heard of the one in heaven? Have you heard how he gave his son? Cause I have found this love. I believe in the sun. Show me your way. Jesus, you are my best friend. You will always be. of Ephesians into our heads and our hearts. These are those words. We are created by God. We belong to Christ Jesus. And we're really looking at the word belong this week. And if we were signing it in American Sign Language, we'd sign it like this. Belong. So we're going to use our Play-Doh to make that same sign. So get your Play-Doh and kind of make it into a long pencil shape. Or a bottom. snake. Or a snake. I always okay. call these snakes. <laughs> so we're going to make it into a long pencil shape. And Mark is going to make one circle. And I'm going to Put mine in. Wonderful. 
wonderful. Let's say it again. We are created by God. We belong to Christ Jesus. Our scripture for the month. Just like that. You know, I sometimes have big questions about God. Do you ever have big questions about God? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Uh, yeah. And big questions about God are perfectly okay. And in fact, God welcomes questions and doubt and all that wondering we have. God really wants us and welcomes us to ask questions, to study, to think, to read the Bible, to talk to each other about it, to pray about it, about all those things that we're learning and we want to understand and maybe we don't always understand. You know, there's one thing that I have problems sometimes understanding or have questions about and that I spend a lot of time thinking about, and it's this. How is God three people in one? God the Father, the Creator, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. God, Jesus, and the Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Three. Three is one. You know, people have been pondering that, which means to think a lot about it, and praying about that very question ever since Jesus first said in the book of John these words, the friend, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send at my request, will make everything plain to you. He, meaning the Holy Spirit, will remind you of all the things I've told you. So we have God the Father sending the Holy Spirit to us because of Jesus' request. It sounds like those are three separate people, yet they're all one, one God. That is a brain puzzler for sure. But let's think of it like this. Let's use Mark as an example. Mark, three people in one. What do I mean by that? Well, Mark is my husband. That's true. <laughs> He's a dad to our kids, Margaret and John. Uh-huh. I love those guys. Yeah. And he's also a son to his mom and dad. Yeah, my parents. Uh-huh. Anne and Ron Hanscom. So yeah. he's three people in one. Mm -hmm. hmm. And being a husband, a dad, and a son means that Mark has different roles or different purposes or different jobs for all those but three I'm things. one person. But you're one person. God, the Father, the Creator, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit all have different roles in our lives, yet are all the same. They're all part of the Trinity, a word in our faith that means three united in one. The person of Jesus came to earth to show us how we are made in the image of of God the Father. And when Jesus died, the person of the Holy Spirit was sent to live with us, to be our constant friend. Do you still have questions about this? <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yes. Me too. The Trinity, or three in one, is a hard part of learning about our faith. And it's hard to understand, and a lot of adults like us are still thinking and praying and pondering about it. But even though I don't have all the answers to my questions, I still believe. 
And I still believe in the Trinity because the Trinity isn't a puzzle to be solved, but a person to be worshipped. Mm -hmm. A person to be worshipped in wonder. Mm -hmm. God is one and God is three in one. Mm -hmm. God invites us to be part of that relationship because of love. Just like I and Margaret and John and his Mark, mom and dad are part of a loving relationship with Mark. You and me, let's keep asking big questions. Because the God who created us who died for us, who lives inside of us, is more wonderful than we can imagine and wants to be part of our lives, mm -hmm. yours and mine, mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. Let's pray. In the month of January, we're really using silent prayer, the time that we go before God and we're just quiet. And sometimes in our busy lives, it's really hard to be quiet. But when we are quiet and we sit and listen, sometimes we hear that still, quiet voice of God. So let's do that now. Let's be quiet before God in prayer. Let's pray together. Amen. You know, friends, Mark and I want to invite you next down to our kitchen where we have been baking one of the first snacks ever invented. Yeah, there's flour everywhere down there. <laughs> there is. That first snack ever invented was the pretzel. Mm. And you might be asking, what does the pretzel have to do with what we've been talking about today. Well, come downstairs with us and see. Hi, friends. Welcome down to our kitchen counter where I'm rolling out some pieces of bread dough to shape it into a pretzel. Legend has it that the pretzel was invented in the year 610 AD by an Italian monk. And this monk took pieces of bread dough, leftover pieces of bread dough, and shaped it to resemble the arms of children praying. So they, he took it and he twisted it once and he twisted it twice to resemble the arms of children playing. And then he gave it this snack treat to children as a reward for learning their scripture and their prayers. Let me turn this around a little bit because the other thing about the pretzel, this very first snack ever invented, was that it represents the Trinity with the three holes, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, all connected and one. Now, why don't you grab your Play-Doh and make a long pencil shape, and we'll do it one more time all together, and Mark will do it with some Play-Doh. Okay, now I'm going to try to use my Play-Doh. You can do this at home, and we'll try to make something like what Leslie is making with the real dough. I'm going to stretch this out. And I remember reading in the recipe that Leslie's making, and I'm going to roll it like this. I think the ropes that you make the pretzels out of 
are supposed to be two feet long. They are. 24 that? inches. That seems so long. I know. So look at that. That's probably about one foot. Now that's just 11 inches. All right, so I need to keep going and make this even longer. It takes a fairly big size clump of Play-Doh to make this work. But as I go like this and press towards the edges, my Play-Doh is getting longer and longer and longer. I don't know if it's 24 inches yet. And if it's not quite 24 inches, that's okay. Now, oh, oh now it's it. 24 inches. Okay. All right. So I think what I saw her do is you kind of begin to make a loop like this and you cross it mm -hmm. like this. And then look, I'm crossing my hands to cross it one more time like that. Mm -hmm. And then you bring these. I'm sliding this down. You bring these back up like mm -hmm. that. You got it. And maybe these can kind of tuck over mm -hmm. and tuck over. So here is a Play-Doh pretzel. And I see this has the three shapes too for the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Great. Look yeah. at these. And the arms that are crossed like praying arms. And the arms that are crossed like praying arms. Look at these pretzels that Leslie has made so far on the cutting board. She's put some flour on this so they don't stick. Mmm. We'll show you what they look like when they're all done baking. Look, everybody. The pretzels are done. Yum. And we think they look and smell really delicious. They're going to be wonderful. <laughs> we can't wait to have them as a snack. Remembering that those three poles remind us of the Trinity. Father, Son, Son and Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. And we'll use those same words, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost, in our closing song today, our postlude, when we sing the doxology, that sung prayer that is sung across denominations all over the world. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him above the heavenly hosts. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Thanks for being with us, everybody. We'll see you next time. It is good to be together. Always, always. So long, farewell, goodbye, like pumpkins. So long, farewell, goodbye, like pumpkins. So long, farewell, goodbye, like pumpkins. So long, farewell, see you soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody.